All right, where we left off last time is we created a block array. Now, right now, it's set to a group of um, Boolean variables, this array. And what I'll do in a subsequent video is I will um, review arrays using C++, like just coding it out so you can see that. And I'm also going to review nested for loops. Um, it'll help to make better sense of the code when we're cycling through sets of three for the, um, uh, the actual tic-tac-toe board. Anyway, so we have an array here. It's of type Boolean. And if you're used to scripting in Unity C Sharp, if I want to access something that um, has a type of script attached to it, what we do is we make the variable type the name of that script. So I want to access anything from puzzle block, right? And if you remember, puzzle block is the block itself. So if I click over here and I go to the viewport, I want to access all of these guys here. So let's hit F to focus on that so you can see that. I want to access all of these. So back in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the data type here. And I'm going to type in puzzle. And you'll see the first option is puzzle block. Now this is an array that can store the position of all of those puzzle blocks, or really anything that's attached to that script. So what I want to do is um, I'm going to hook that up to our spawn actor here. I didn't do anything yet, but I'm just going to add them together, this with this array class. So I'm going to drag this in, and I'm going to get it. And then in order to connect the two, I'm just going to drag this out, and I'm going to look for an add function. Now, this function's really, again, it's not doing anything. All it's doing is it's connecting. It's creating a bridge between these two. So you don't want to get too caught up in, like, what does the add do and all this stuff. All it's doing is it's giving me a connection between this and our, all of this code that actually spawns the, the pieces. We kind of went over this before. And make sure you're taking notes as you watch these videos. So it's connected here. So I'm going to grab my target here, connect it here, and then the return value coming out of that is going to go into this. I'm going to hit Compile and Save. So we just now we have our array attached. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to create something called a macro. Um, and what that is, is it's a custom, um, it's a custom attribute like this, but when you double click on, it opens up a input and an output. So it's sort of like embedding all of this within a smaller file. And then we use that in our blueprint. Um, so it's a way of condensing or cleaning up code. Now the macro that I'm going to create is going to log all of the possible winning combinations. So I'm going to pause the video and show you what I'm talking about. All right. So here's the image that I was talking about. So in order to check when a player wins, we need to know um, all of the possible combinations, right? So we have a, um, a grid here of uh, three rows by three columns, and then we have two diagonals. These are all the different ways to win. And that equals um, a total of 28 different combinations or movements. So um, I'm sorry, not 28, 24 times. So we need to make a comparison and scroll through these things 24 times to see if two are the same or all three are the same across. This can get pretty hefty because um, we're going to be doing a lot of ands or, or checking. So we're going to do that within a macro. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out and I'm going to make a new macro. Now this is inside of my puzzle block uh, grid and I'm going to call this is owner. And this is going to check who owns that tile or that block. And um, inside of inputs, we're going to look for, we're going to add two input integer values. So I'm going to add two of these out. And um, the second integer is going to check what the, which player it is. Remember, we have zero for no player, one uh, for the first player, for player one, and the other one for player two. Now, remember, we have an array that we're going to be cycling through. So let's just drag this up and hit get here. So inside of an array, if you're not familiar with it, I do have already have videos on arrays and stuff. Um, but what we well, in array, the way you access the individual elements or the slots is by its index. So inside of this value here, I'm just going to call this um, for this variable name here. Let's select that. Sorry, we're going to name it block index. And then for our output we're going to output whoever the owner of that slot is. So I'm going to add this. I'm going to make sure it's a Boolean. We're just going to check who the owner is. So I'm going to do is owner. 
All right. Now let's, um, what I want to do is I want to get the two values between these. So I'm going to extend this out and I'm going to look for a get, or actually an easier way to do it is just grab my block array and just do a get, or I'm sorry, a set. Well, I guess we could do it this way and do a get from here. There we go. And there's our get function. So we're going to get the value, whatever's inside of this array. So if it's at slot zero and it's the first um, peg, or the first little box, um, that's where this comes in. Notice that there was a numerical value here. It's a zero. So it's slot zero, whatever peg that is stored. So we're getting those two values. The next thing we want to do is we want to get the block state. So we're going to um, jump back here for a second. And what we want to add um, inside of our um, puzzle block, or actually, let's maybe we'll add it in. We'll do it in block state because that's where we have our actual blocks. We're going to add a byte value. So I'm going to go in here. And a byte is just simply, you know, it's the same thing. It's a numerical value. But we're going to do 0, 1, and 2. So I'm going to name this new variable block state. And then within block state, I want to make sure that it's on byte. And the default value, let's hit compile, should be zero. That means nobody selected it. Okay. So let's go ahead and hit compile and save. Let's go back here. And then what I want to do is get whatever that state is. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to type out block state. So there's get block state. So we're actually getting that block state value that we just created from the other script. And the last thing we're going to do is check so this whole string here is checking what's inside of the array. And then what this does here is, we're, is we, we need to check who the owner is. So again, so say we're at index 0, and they click on it, and player 1 owns it. So how do we do that? Well, I'm going to right-click in here, and I'm going to type equal. And I'm going to be looking for a byte, so equal byte, something like this. And then notice that they're both numerical values. So whatever this index is, and then whatever player we're on. I'm going to plug that right into our owner. And that's how we're going to check if they're owner. I'm going to go ahead and hit compile and save here. And I'm actually going to stop the video here um, at the seven minute mark. And the next one, we'll go through connecting all of the uh, combinations.